Hello and welcome to a Star Citizen monthly report summary, looking at what CIG have been working on for the last few weeks and what some of their development focus is now relating to Star Citizen's persistent universe. Star Citizen is currently undergoing its January 2020 scheduling and prioritization meetings that should give us a more meaty and accurate roadmap after they finished reflecting the year's focus for the game and its features, but work has already begun on the 3.9 alpha patch, which is expected at the end of March, so end of Q1 2020, but they've already begun work on some features for 2020 beyond that as well. So let's take a look at environment and gameplay area to start with. Planetary Deck V4, which was the combined effort of many months' work, is now out, as is Microtech. Now, Planetary Tech V4 is still going to receive updates, but there isn't any form of planned sort of Planetary Tech V5. It's going to remain with that core engine of Planetary Tech V4 and just get updated and iterated on. They are currently working on the interior of New Babbage with the spaceport and major shopping districts, as well as traversal between those areas, which is apparently nearing completion and will be ready for 3.9. There's also a load of locations and missions for the planet's surface that need to be added. Planetary weather effects continue to be authored with a particular focus on ground storms across all planets and moons. There are improvements for massive shadows and work continued on planetary clouds, ocean rendering, frozen oceans, and wind bending for static brushes, because there is going to be literally texture maps of wind and storms moving around, which will be dynamic in the future. Improvements were made to the new planet paint tint systems. These will likely primer the environments in upcoming alpha releases and later expand to other assets. They have released some of the updated space station interiors, which is the first step in bringing the interiors in line with the new larger exteriors. But there's still a way to go before they're considered finished, including adding more spaces to them to make them feel even more alive. So expect more variants, more additions there. They have recently moved off the uh, abandoned and automated stations off the roadmap in the short term. I'll hopefully see that um, return after they've done their planning meetings. But um, there's a lot more stuff they want to do with space stations and interiors in the short to medium term. Work continued on the upcoming prisons and prison gameplay. They've been working on various things for this, including interactive props such as oxygen and equipment dispensers and the prisoner status consoles. Progress was also made on high-tech props for uh, new Babbage, but they'll also be used across the verse eventually. They've been working on generic rest stop kiosk templates as well. This is going to allow them to make many more uh, future locations more easily. They are also finishing up the refactor of the new restricted area system, which we'll see in new features in 3.9, like spline landing guidance, which sounds like it might actually pull us into certain landing zones or might uh, avoid touching the ground by pulling us around uh, but hopefully we'll be able to fly very close to cities across uh, the game rather than sort of like being insta-killed or or anything like that or being not be able to get anywhere near close but it's sort of like pull us around still so I'm, I'm hoping that we get a good system for restricted areas work has also begun on the pyro system as well as jump gate effects being iterated on um, including tunnel effects we should see the pyro system and jump gates are later in 2020 they are working on theaters of war the new objective based star marine game mode which crosses over for the sort of like combined arms combat and there's been a lot of improvements to the map shown at CitizenCon. I'm expecting that will be the only map we will have in the short term. It's expected that Theatres of War should be in players' hands in some form uh, by the end of Q1 2020. So engine and back-end stuff. So they've been testing long-term persistence for inventory and the ledger systems. So long-term persistence in all its forms is one of the major things I'm excited about. Um, hopefully we'll see uh, persistence of... Uh, Alpha UBC and Alpha UBC purchases between patches in the shorter term, at least with platform persistence that's supposed to be coming in the 3.8 branch, we should see CIG be able to choose when they do um, sort of like a whole database reset and perf uh, persistence reset, which might happen still reasonably regularly if exploits or um, issues occur. They are continuing to integrate the quantum economy simulation with their back-end services, such as shopping and probability volumes, so we should see the start of that as well soon. They converted all existing missions to work with the current and future iterations of SOX server-side object container streaming, so all missions and 
pretty much all parts of the game are now built with socks server-side object container streaming in mind this signals a major change as players are now guided to specific locations before they're fully loaded more generally they are updating missions that are now in game as well as adding new ones they continue to work on a vulcan integration the new graphics pipeline and gen 12 renderer interface they also continued the parallel refactor of existing renderer code in support of the new graphics line and apis they have been working on game physics and soft bodies to get them looking good and performing well lots and lots and lots of optimization and improvements to the um, sort of renderer stuff has been being made on their plod towards that vulcan integration and you know having scalable graphics options all that sort of stuff ship items and interaction things so cig recently released the argo mole the multi-mining ship so you can have lots of crew in there all mining the same rock so three crew all lasering the same rock and one pilot uh, slash scanner uh, dude running around flying around and um, helping you with that and they are about to release the Cutlass Red to the 3.8.1 live build. The Anvil Carrack has continued to receive significant focus from the teams, and the exterior received a detail pass and some slight trimming to the rear to improve visual balance. The interior continues towards final art, with several areas not seen at CitizenCon nearing completion. The Carrack is expected to be flyable by the end of February 2020, and they have been looking and potentially addressed some of the issues um, that people had from seeing the Citizen Con demo. A lot of people were um, wanted the character to look a little bit different or wanted the um, rear engines to change or go back to what the original concept looked like. So we'll have to see what CIG have done once they release it. Vehicle features have improved with uh, radar and ping detection for better scanning gameplay. They are also currently working on item port despawn optimization, which will help improve general performance. They also made some extra headway with long range radar scanning. They've started work on the Gemini C54 submachine pew pew uh, weapon. Two and Terrarium weapons were taken through the pipeline for ships uh, and will be ready with the upcoming Esperia Prowler uh, launch planned for March and potentially part of 3.9 if it's coming in March. If it's planned for the end of March, it could be part of the 3.8 branch or um, go with 3.9 initial release. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, interested to see what Tavaran um, weapons we will see there, though. Uh, UI continued to have its building block system refined. So we're going to see better menus, interactions and panels in the game. This can be seen on the new elevator panel that they showed at the Citizen Con demo. We're going to see a lot more tactile sort of interactions when it comes to panels and things we can touch. Um, and we'll see different versions of these panels at Microtech, on the Carrack, um, the low tech locations that they've all been working on, even if they do have the same sort of like base canvas for their systems, they will all look quite different in the different locations that you're in. There's also been a lot of work on the actor status display system. So actor status system is going to be tracking your thirst, your hunger, your food. I suppose that is hunger, uh, all this sort of stuff. Uh, inebriation, I suppose. Temperature. Um, at the moment, it tracks stamina and oxygen levels. But we're, we're going to see more and more uh, additions to this. Uh, and the way that's displayed to the player, external temperatures, all that sort of stuff. That's planned to release shortly. Um, so we should have some cool um, little um, viewables with that. Props further developed the quantum and jump drives. There are various new interactive items and props they've been working on, like access cards, servers, server modules, security gates, tarps, and flags, which we will see in the game shortly. They have also continued work on lockers and crates that were used throughout the CitizenCon 2019 demo that contained the different clothing and armor needed for the player to traverse hostile environments. Now, obviously, this sort of stuff gets more and more important as we move towards physicalized um, components and physicalized inventory. Um, time was spent on the Anvil Carrack and Penguin plushies. We should see that in the near future. Some AI stuff. So ship AI have been working on NPC planet side traversal. So this is vastly different from spaceflight for AI and obviously getting AI to move between the physics grids and moving between um, atmospheric flight and space flight and knowing that they can move between those two it is hugely important as well. So the first iteration involved generating a flight path suitable for terrain height and sort of like the local geometry. This is then used to correct the path to ensure ships always have a specified minimal clearance to the terrain below while steering according to the inclination of the terrain. For example, a ship will favor a flight path for a valley rather than going over a ridge. Hand placed and procedurally generated objects 
rocks, buildings, etc. are not part of the terrain elevation information are actually obtained through a different query in which the AI then uses to work out where to go. In the next iteration, they will be integrating this information so spaceships can adapt their flight paths accordingly. The same considerations apply to in-atmosphere dogfighting. The prototype of this was shown during the recent CitizenCon playthrough with three security ships engaging the fugitive Carrick and they had these like weird little spins. They're sort of like trying out some interesting behaviours and some... Um, interesting techniques that the AI can do. Obviously it wasn't great there, but um, it's it, they're working on it. They've completed some work on AI collision avoidance. This system runs in the background during AI flight and provides steering correction if a collision is likely to happen with any objects or other ships. There has been improvements to path following for social AI to help them navigate and interact with the world appropriately. The bartender has seen more work and is able to make a variety of drinks and serve them to patrons in a smoother way. They have been improving the combat experience against NPCs, adding new behavior tactics for shotgun wielding NPCs, giving them tactical choices to get them much closer to the target than before to make pro proper use of those particular items. They also began improving vision perception uh, NPC vision cones and AI hearing. So um, this is all sort of like to give players a better stealth experience and give NPCs appropriate reactions to hearing things or seeing a player for the first time. Did you sneak up on them? Do you want to do takedowns on them? That sort of stuff. There's also updates to the system that generates cover locations and um, enables AI to work out um, when to cover themselves, partially cover themselves, move between cover, all that sort of jazz. AI systems have generally seen a lot of optimization work, making them lighter on resources, more robust, and more resistant to desync. And that's it for this month. We can look forward to some updates on the roadmap, and especially 3.9 and 4.0 in the near future, helping reflect current plans for Star Citizen's persistent universe. But what do you think? Are you happy with the progress that Star Citizen is now making, or is it still far too slow for you? Are you playing Star Citizen current live build or the, in the PTU? What do you think of that experience? 3.8 Live has had a lot of bugs. Do you think that 3.9 will have the same amount of bugs loads more and um, or do you think they're trying to get it into a more playable state check back on my channel soon because i will be covering the squadron 42 newsletter and updates to squadron episode 1 asap uh, but whatever your thoughts i'd love to hear from you in the comments below Every month we have a ship giveaway for January 2020. It's for an Anvil Arrow and Star Citizen game package. Just comment on any of my videos made this month to be in for a chance. Um, more details in the description below. Oh, it's time to shill. If you're looking for a VPN, then consider NordVPN. They have many advantages over free VPNs, but are incredibly cheap and I use them and can recommend. There's Shadow as well, which is an alternative to owning your own gaming PC. They give you a sort of Windows 10 environment focused on gaming and it leverages the power of your instets and their cloud so that you can stream it to any device or other PC or laptop or phone or whatever. And you can now order systems with varying scales of hardware for up to 4K gaming. And as always, it works fantastically well with Star Citizen. It's an extremely affordable way to get access to a high spec PC. Links below to Shadow and Nord, and make sure you use the code BoardGamer to get a discount. Thank you very much for watching, and if you want to support my channel further, consider becoming a Patreon or YouTube member via the join button, or sharing my videos, or liking and subscribing. Take care, and I'll see you in the verse.